Let's talk bereavement, because watching a movie about a girl kidnapped by a butcher isn't depressing enough already. You gotta see what happens afterwards. It all begins in 1989, when Graham Sutter observes children playing and walking to their homes in Minersville, Pennsylvania. Martin, who has a rare condition that prevents him from feeling pain, sits on his swing in the yard while his mother talks to a nurse aide. Catherine discloses that the boy could get hurt and not realize it, so she tells the aide that she would need to check Martin's body every hour for cuts and bruises. Outside, Graham arrives and invites Martin to his truck with a new bike. Catherine, terrified, runs outside to look around for Martin when she doesn't see him in his swing. However, the boy is long gone, riding in Graham's truck on their way back to his house. In the dead of night, a captive woman awakens in a dark basement to witness Graham hauling a weighty sack. She sobs as Graham reveals a young boy inside and pulls out a knife, butchering the boy's face without a flinch. The woman's screams grow louder as Graham advances towards her with an even longer knife, raising her higher on a rope as she cries in agony. Outside, Martin flees into the pouring rain but is quickly caught by Graham and brought back inside. Five years after the incident, Jonathan collects his 17-year-old niece, Allison, from the bus stop who recently lost her parents in an accident. Wendy inquires about Allison's athletic routines while Karen escorts her to her room. Melissa departs the diner after finishing her shift, and Graham obstructs her exit by parking his truck in front of her car, shoving her to the ground and abducting her. As Graham restrains the trembling woman, Martin peeks through the wall's crevices to observe him. Another captive joins in, whispering hopelessly to Melissa. She weeps for help, but the other captive believes it to be pointless, disclosing that their demise is imminent. Melissa panics as she fails to recollect the date, bellowing for help. During a jog, Allison spots the slaughterhouse, seeing Martin at a window before he vanishes. Graham admonishes Martin for his inquisitiveness as Martin's hand bleeds from a wound. Allison almost gets hit by a truck and falls by the roadside, but William offers her a ride home, noticing her minor leg injury. She hesitates but eventually agrees. She opens up about her tragic past and they arrive at her destination. When they return home, Jonathan is unhappy to see them together. At the slaughterhouse, Graham proudly shows Martin his captives and shares his experience in cattle slaughter. As he prepares to begin, Melissa begins to whimper and the other captive screams in terror as Graham begins to brutally attack the other woman. Graham orders Martin to restrain the woman, but the boy flees. Eventually, Graham catches Martin and shows him a bull skull effigy that he talks to before locking the boy in a small room. Later, Graham boils a pot of water and pours it over his hand, but he doesn't flinch even as the hot water burns through his skin. Allison and Jonathan pass the slaughterhouse on their way to school. Jonathan tells Allison that it's an abandoned meatpacking plant, but the facility closed due to not meeting government standards. Meanwhile, Graham takes the boy out of the chamber, gives him a sponge bath, dresses him, and asks him to clean up the blood. At school, Allison inquires about the track team, but the gym teacher says cheerleading is the only option for girls. She watches the cheerleading squad but becomes bored and leaves. Graham's truck follows her, but drives off once she stops walking. As Jonathan waits for her at the school entrance, Allison pays a visit to William, who's fixing his car. After attempting to chat with him, she realizes he's busy and decides to leave. He tries to ask her out, but his father's cries for help cut him off. Inside the house, Ted has fallen from his wheelchair. Allison rushes in to assist William, but Ted greets her with derogatory comments about Chicago and his own son. Disturbed, she quickly departs. On her way home, Allison passes by the slaughterhouse, searching for the boy. Though he's nowhere to be found, Graham is waiting for her on the path to his house. Inside, Melissa tries to talk to Martin as he scrubs the walls, but he remains silent. Graham joins them, questioning why cattle run in fear despite lacking emotions. He then grabs a knife and prepares to cut Martin's arm. After leaving a laceration, Graham taunts Melissa about Martin's conscience. Meanwhile, Jonathan scolds Allison for missing his pickup, warning her not to do it again. That night, Melissa wakes up to find Martin in front of her, alone. She pleads with him to set her free, but he slowly approaches her with a knife. She escapes the slaughterhouse, but Graham finds out when she screams in terror after running into the effigy. She tries to hit Graham with a metal rod, but he overpowers her and hangs her upside down by a chain. Graham chains the struggling woman and burns her in the furnace, then scolds Martin for her escape and warns him that the effigies can no longer trust him. He later visits the attic and talks to a sheet-covered body, which he blames for the tragedies at the plant. He sees the body moving, but after closing his eyes and looking again, realizes it's not moving at all. 
Allison heads out for a jog after school and catches the eye of William, who offers her a ride. They stop at a diner, where William shares some personal details about his family, including his mother's death and his father's paralysis. Later, they drive to an abandoned drive-in theater where Allison opens up about her own tragic past. As William and Allison get lost in the moment, a truck pulls up, unnoticed by the young couple. In the midst of their passion, Jonathan suddenly appears and demands that Allison leave the car. Despite her objections, he insists on taking her home and forbids her from seeing William again. Jonathan tells Allison that living on her own won't be easy, but he can't force her to stay. Allison decides to remain with Jonathan and agrees to abide by his rules, even though he hates to stifle her independence. Meanwhile, Graham wakes up Martin late at night to assist him in abducting another woman. As the woman pleads for her life, Graham hands Martin the knife and tells him to stab her. When Martin refuses, Graham orders him to hold the woman to prevent her from fighting back. Graham proceeds to stab the woman, with her screams reverberating throughout the abandoned slaughterhouse. Later, Graham cleans the blood off Martin's face by dunking his head in a dirty bathtub. Graham notices a shadow approaching and yells at it, but the figure quickly departs. Martin eventually escapes and runs through the fields, only to encounter the effigy of a dead bull. As the bull's skull turns to face him, Martin awakens from a nightmare. Allison plans to pack and leave the following day, but Karen persuades her to stay by suggesting that Jonathan will trust her if she gives him a chance. Karen explains that William has been dealing with significant family issues and that his mother didn't die due to pneumonia as he claimed earlier, but committed suicide, which William found traumatic. The incident caused William to be heavily medicated, and he has since had problems around town, causing Jonathan to worry about his stability. Allison abruptly heads to William's house to apologize for the previous night. She discloses that she knows what happened to his mother, empathizing with his loss. Ted overhears and confronts Allison for discussing William's mother, lamenting her abandonment. William tries to calm his father down, but Ted grows even more exasperated, causing Allison to leave. While heading home, Allison spots Martin by the slaughterhouse window. However, he runs away upon seeing her, so she searches for him. As she approaches the building, Allison notices Graham's truck leaving and waits for him to leave before continuing her search for Martin. Allison spots him waiting by the door, and he scurries down to the basement before she can catch up with him. She follows him through the slaughterhouse and finds Graham's journal in a gruesome room. Allison flips through the pages and discovers news clippings about missing girls, each page adorned with their personal belongings. She finds a news article about Martin's disappearance and realizes the boy she's been pursuing is him. According to Graham's note, Martin doesn't speak much and is either scared or stupid. As Allison searches for Martin, she pleads with Martin to leave with her, but he cowers in fear and hides behind her. And she's suddenly confronted by Graham. In a sudden turn of events, Graham knocks Allison out cold with a metal rod. As daylight turns to dusk, Jonathan grows concerned about Allison's whereabouts but Karen assures him that she's probably just venting her frustration. Unbeknownst to them, Allison is fighting for her life inside the slaughterhouse, her hands bound and her screams for help echoing through the halls. Karen informs Jonathan the next day that Allison didn't come home the previous night. After failing to find Allison elsewhere, Jonathan goes to Graham's farmhouse. Inside, Allison yells for help as loud as she can, but Graham gags her. Jonathan asks to come inside, but Graham tells him to wait. While waiting, Jonathan hears Allison yelling for help, but before he can react, Graham shoots him. Graham then unties Allison, takes her to a walk-in freezer, and leaves her there. William, who is on his way home, notices Jonathan's truck by the farmhouse and decides to stop by to find out if he found Allison. Meanwhile, a shivering Allison takes a sheet to cover herself, but discovers a corpse underneath and screams for help. The woman cries out to Martin for help, but he turns away and leaves her screaming. William arrives at the walk-in freezer and sees Allison, but the door is locked. After he breaks the lock and loosens the chains, Graham hits him in the head with a shovel. Later, Graham argues with an imaginary entity, the bull's skull on the wall, telling it to leave Martin alone because he needs the boy's help to clean up the mess at the slaughterhouse. He smashes the bull's skull with an axe, but when he looks at the wall, the skull is still hanging there undamaged. Graham castigates Martin for his lack of emotion and stabs his hand with a knife, pinning it to the table. Graham then leaves the boy, telling him not to cause any trouble while he's gone. Meanwhile, Allison notices a hole in the freezer door and unlocks it using a metal rod. As she tries to leave the house, she finds Martin in the kitchen with a knife pinning his hand to the table. She pulls out the knife, wraps his hand with a piece of cloth, and carries him out of the house. 
On her way out of the farmhouse, Allison knocks down the effigy to show Martin not to be afraid of it. Elsewhere, Graham arrives at the farmhouse on Jonathan's truck and attacks Karen when she opens the door. Karen runs to the kitchen, telling Wendy to run as Graham tries to subdue her. Karen tries to get a knife, but Graham knocks it to the floor. Wendy locks herself in her room while Karen struggles with Graham, who takes the knife and stabs her in the chest, causing Wendy to hear her mother's screams. A few moments later, Graham drags Jonathan's body inside the house and sets the curtains on fire. He takes a cleaver and heads to Wendy's bedroom. He forces the door open and walks towards Wendy, but stops and drops the cleaver after hearing her plea for her pet's lives. Graham hints that he also had a pet that trusted him unconditionally, but was forced to kill it. Allison arrives at Jonathan's house carrying Martin and sees the living room in flames. She finds Karen in the kitchen, who tells Allison not to let Graham hurt Wendy. So Allison grabs a knife and stabs Graham in the back when he tries to take Wendy back to the farmhouse. After he flees, she finds Karen dead in the kitchen and calls the police before searching for Martin. She gets stabbed when she opens a blood-stained door and is repeatedly stabbed by Martin until she stops screaming. As Martin heads towards Wendy's room, she shrieks in fear, but no one else is alive in the house. Graham returns to the farmhouse's attic to talk to the figure beneath the sheets. He now understands why the cattle run when they're hurt and stresses that even dumb animals realize when they've been betrayed. The figure didn't run when killed because he didn't feel betrayed. As Martin approaches, he hits Graham with an ax. Graham thanks him as the ax lands on his chest, causing his blood to burst. Martin continues hacking at his body until he finally dies. In the morning, firefighters find four charred bodies inside Jonathan's house, not bothering to look for evidence of any other crime. Ted searches for William in his room but doesn't find him, so he waits for him by the door. In the slaughterhouse, Martin constructs a new effigy on the wall using the skeleton of the figure in the attic. He stands by the window contemplating following in Graham's footsteps, who had sympathized with slaughtered animals. Graham's father convinced him that animals don't feel emotions, but his mind snapped after he killed a pet. He heard voices ordering him to treat humans like cattle, kidnapped Martin to teach him, and expressed gratitude as Martin slaughtered him. 